So I'm postponing the finished credenza video for another week because it just isn't dry and instead posting the second installment of the bathroom vanity. Um, the first part of the, the process for this video at least is going to be breaking down some three quarter inch birch veneer ply to make the drawers for the drawer boxes in the cabinet. And once again with um, the videos of things I make in multiples, I have other more in-depth videos on my channel showing you how I prefer to make drawers as well as how I prefer to make drawers and how to mount things with European style hinges. Most of those videos are links in the description box if you want a more in-depth look of how to make those things. But basically I use three quarter inch ply because it's something I always have in hand and it's usually scrap left over from the cabinet that I'm building as well as the fact that it's compatible with my dovetail jig. So the biggest pain in my opinion of this dovetail jig because I have it set up pretty much for um, my thickness stock is getting the depth right on the router. So what I did was I cut a 9 16 inch dado which is the depth I need and now I could use that for future setups to just quickly set the depth on my plunge router. So um, like I said if you want to see how to set up and use this thing you can use the link in the description but my box opening was 12 and 3 quarters and pretty much standard for drawer slides is you're going to subtract an inch from that a half inch on each side for the metal slides so I cut out three 11 by 3 quarter inch pieces by 6 inches because all my drawers were 6 inches tall and those were going to be my fronts and then these are um, a little over 18 inches long because I used 18 inch drawer slides so then I cut out six pieces 18 inches by six and since this is going into a bathroom and a lot of things you store in the bathroom are usually liquids and liquids are heavy in general when they're in bottles I went with um, a half inch bottom on these drawers it's probably a little oversized but I'd rather be safe than sorry so I put my dado stack in my table saw and cut that bottom and then with that half inch stack I just cut that three quarter inch dado in the back for the back of the cabinets which was easy I just ran um, it through two times in order to get the width with that half inch stack and then off camera I'm testing the fit of these boxes as I go so once I had was this far I could put them together and measure for the backer as well as the bottom so this is cutting the backer and I always um, use some scrap to test the dovetail jig before I use it because it has to be f pretty exact or nothing will line up so I was just using that scrap in order to cut the backer and like I said the bottoms hit half inch ply so I took some scrap half inch ply ripped it to length on the radial arm saw and then I just trimmed it down to size on my table saw and like most of, most of my methods, I'll fully admit, they are more time consuming than other ways to build things. But I like them because they're structurally superior as well as being um, very easy to assemble. Once, if you cut all these pieces properly, these drawers go together and they're usually fairly square without having to tweak them too much. So once all, was, all that was done, it was just a matter of gluing all these things together. And so covering all those dovetails with glue and always remembering not to glue that bottom panel in place. Just sliding it in, gluing in the backer, and then I usually sink a brad into each side to kind of hold everything in place. I'll check for square, and once everything's square, I'll sink some brads into that bottom board. So next came making the two doors, and I'm making all of my pieces out of poplar. So the doors, the styles are, and rails are all two inches thick, and I made them a little thicker than I usually do just because they're, they're um, larger sized doors. So they ended up being um, widthwise 16 and 3 eighths, but, and then they were 25 and a half tall. So the styles, I just cut them to 25 and a half, and then the rails, you're going to have to subtract the uh, width of your styles but then add in the depth of the groove you're making for your panel so I subtracted that four inches but then added another inch because the grooves I usually make about a half inch deep so once I had all my pieces 
I'm putting quarter inch MDF panels in these. I usually use quarter inch plywood, which is a little bit thinner than a quarter inch, but I had the MDF on hand, and like I said, these doors are on the, on the large size for doors, so I wanted them to be sturdy, and I've used MDF before. It's not something I always have in my shop, which is why I don't always use it, but I do prefer it in these doors. It makes them just feel much more solid. So I put a quarter inch stack in my table saw, and I ripped, once I had everything aligned, I always use a scrap in this as well. I ripped um, that groove in all of my pieces. Then in order to get the right height in that stack for my tongue, I took one of those scraps that I had ripped on the table saw and tested the height. And the first fit was a little loose, so I adjusted it and cut it again. And once that's right, I could go through and cut all the tongues on my rails. Because of the type of blade I have in here, this is a I still have that quarter inch dado stack, so I could cut those half inch grooves fairly quickly. And then there's always a little bit of cleanup with her rasp on those edges, but they usually fit fairly well. I don't pre-plane any of this wood. Um, it comes right from the store. So there's sometimes you have to finagle a couple of the joints, but in general they go together really easily. And then I just measure my inner dimensions and I cut my panel by adding um, an inch to either side because of that groove is a half inch. So my panels ended up being 12 and 3 eighths by 21 and a half. And this is that quarter inch MDF. And that quarter inch MDF, since I cut um, a quarter inch groove, was a nice snug fit. Everything held together really nicely. So once these were together and square, I popped them apart. I only take off the styles and then I put glue on those tongues and in my grooves. You don't want to put glue on the panels and then put them back in place. And I don't think I filmed this, but once they're, I don't use clamps on these. I found if you clamp them too much, your styles will actually bow and then your, your door won't fit flush on the cabinet. So the fit of these is, is tight enough that I just put them on there and I'll sink a brad into each corner to hold them in place. So while my doors were drying, I installed my drawers. And this is basically, I take a piece of scrap as a spacer that I want. I install the inner portion of those drawer slides. I only ever put two screws in at first because there's always going to be a little bit of adjustment. It's easier to adjust them if you only have two screws in. And then once that's on there, I kind of just slide the drawer in and make a mark where I should mount the, that uh, slide on the, on the drawer, make a center line, and same process. Two screws, test the fit, and then once everything's solid, I'll add the extra hardware. And then these, once again, are soft closed drawer slides, so you, when you test them, you have to slide them in and out a couple times before that spring mechanism starts working. And then once that was in, I mounted my other two drawers, and because of the way I cut the rails on this piece, my middle drawer is actually, the opening is a little bit smaller, so I, I had to make a new spacer for those top two drawers. Not a big deal. There's the new spacer, and I just mount them on top of the drawers and mount the new sides. So then for the decorative panel on the side, I have to account for the fact that there's gonna be a big cutout for the toe kick. So I actually mounted um, the rails on the top and the bottom and the styles on the inside in order to make that work. And I just put some test pieces on there to see the thicknesses I liked. And that side panel, the rails ended up being four and three quarters thick and the styles were I believe two and a quarter inches thick and then the inner panel ended up being 15 and 3 eighths by 20 and a quarter and the process for making this is identical to making the um, the doors so I'm just cutting my stock ripping it down I'll put that groove in there and then cut the tongues and then glue everything together I was actually hoping to make the doors um, the decorative side panel and the drawer fronts all at the same time because I was planning on constructing them um, similarly but I, when I went to go make the doors I only had I think it was an hour to make them and I ended up making them in that time frame but I've made enough of these 
these style doors for other people that I could make them fairly quickly so it wasn't too terrible to then reset up everything to make this decorative panel and it ended up working out because the drawer fronts I made in a, a different manner which you'll see why at the end of this video and there's the test fit and then this is the same material that quarter inch MDF for that inner panel now the inner panel I cut a little bit smaller than my than my actual dimensions I usually take about a sixteenth inch off of either side just as breather room for the inside of those pieces and then at the end you'll see me grabbing my hand plane um, I always chamfer the edges of those panels just so they slide into place a little bit nicer and then this panel you haven't seen it yet in the video but um, when I go to install it, this panel is longer than the cabinet because I'll scribe the edge of this instead of the back side of the, pag, uh, the cabinet and this will just get screwed into place from the inside. So once that was done, my doors were dry enough to mount the hinges and I have a jig for that as well as a video on here showing you how to use those. And these are the hinges that mount on the face frame which means they, the door will stick out farther than um, the interior style hinges, the face frame hinges, they do stick out a little bit further. So my doors ended up sticking out almost an inch from the face frame versus if they were the interior style hinges, which is why it ended up working out that I didn't make my doors the same way I did because they would have been set further back than the door fronts, and you'll see how I fix that later. But the nice thing about these hinges is they're really easy to install. Once I had them mounted on my door, I just put them in place, made marks, and drilled holes on the inside of that face frame. And then these are one part hinges, they don't pop apart. So once those were on the door, I got a three quarter, a uh, three quarter, I got a three and a half inch spacer, and I just rested the door on top of that spacer. It lined up with the holes and then the doors fit pretty perfectly. You have to always make minor adjustments with those adjustable hinges, but once my reveal was set, um, I could then again use that spacer later to mount the drawer fronts. So like I said, I originally wanted to make the drawer fronts similar to how I made the doors, but because that, of that thickness, I decided to make the drawer fronts out of three quarter inch ply, which I'll end bend all the sides. So this is me cutting those now, and those ended up being 13 and a half by three by eight and three eighths. So I cut three pieces, I edge banded all the sides. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that quarter inch MDF and just trim out the fronts. Like I said, I would have preferred to have make the doors, but I've done this with the MDF where you trim out the fronts before and it works really well. You just have a very small seam between where the MDF and the plywood meets, but since these are going to be underneath the lip of a countertop, you won't really notice it at the end of the day. So once all that edge banding was on, and this camera view is my iPad was running out of battery, so I had to kind of mount it in the corner tethered to electricity, and then I just cut my strips and the strips I kind of eyed the size I wanted and those ended up being an inch and a half so I just cut down all those strips to um, frame out those panels and I'll attach these with some glue and some brads and they'll set up overnight and then I can attach them right to the drawer and it ended up working out for multiple reasons like I said now they'll line up with the doors but also because um, the hardware that's going in these drawer fronts is a single knob, which means it would have had been the same problem with a pull, but um, if that center portion was a floating, floating portion and it wasn't flush with the back of the cabinet, if you tighten that screw too much, you could actually kind of pull that panel in and you could have a little bit of a void in the center. So with a, a solid flat back, you kind of avoid that potential problem with this style. So before I go to mount my drawer fronts, I'm making sure the reveal on the top and bottom of that uh, style next to my door is consistent, which is three eighths of an inch, so everything will stay f uh, square. So in order to figure out the original um, size of these faces, you could see my original mark over here, and that was based on the fact that I wanted a quarter inch reveal between 
the cabinet door and the cabinet drawer and that was just so that these could open nicely because you could see how much of a gap is there from those hinges. So if these were those flush mounted hinges where these are closer to the face frame, you could get away with a smaller reveal here. But with um, them sticking out that far, um, a quarter inch is better to ensure that the edge of your door won't hit the edge of your drawers. So then I just drew a mark on the other side um, so that I had enough space between the wall and the cabinet. And then that was going to be my width from this mark to this mark. And then to calculate the size of each, even though these compartments aren't the same size, I wanted the size of the doors to be the same. I just took the height of my doors, divided that by three, and then calculated for the fact that the spacers I was using for those doors are a little less than a quarter inch. So I just subtracted that um, width from those sizes, and that's how I got my three doors. Now to mock these in place, I'm going to be using the same spacer as my doors. I'm going to put um, this spacer over here, and I usually use double-sided tape for this, but I don't have any on me. I used it all up, so I'm just going to tack these in place with hot glue, and then I'll come back through and screw them from the back side and attach them, but for the sake of this video, I'll probably just show them hot glued in place, and then the final video will be showing how um, this isn't done, but this is going to be an ex um, exposed medicine cabinet for the same space. Um, painting this as well as that, and hopefully getting a couple pictures of the install. And that probably will not be posted next week because I have to put um, the credenza, which I started clear coating, up. But will probably be maybe two weeks from now.